While you and me repeat This bittersweet heat Is suffocating I'm waiting And always hesitating Kryptonite desire Set my heart afire Heart on fire Hey guys and girls, welcome back to YYC Designs, RC Creations For those of you who don't know me I am Twist, and we are working on root beer today. However, a little twist, okay? I was working on the horse trailer that uh, uh, you're seeing inserts of the, of the photos right now. Now, it's a horse trailer, a full-size horse trailer, number one, but it was involved in a jackknife going backwards. Whole front end got pushed in especially along the cap of the roof line and that sort of thing. So what I really wanted to show you today was on root beer, we're doing the doors and some other panels, but I also wanted to throw in a little tip for those of y'all who do metal models at home. I can show you how I stretch and or shrink metal as I need. Now, I'm not talking like shrink or stretch as in as much as an elastic, but metal does shrink and it does stretch. And it just all depends on how you work with it to get it to do either or. So I want to show you today a little bit about metal shrinking and stretching because on this horse trailer that I'm working on, now the metal obviously got stretched, but in a bad way. When metal is struck, for every place that metal stretches, somewhere it's going to shrink. It's just the way it is. Elastic bands, or to our friends in the US, rubber bands, work the same way, only your eye can't see it because it's so minute. So you got to kind of think about an elastic band or even pushing on the corner of a Kleenex box because if you push in one corner it affects the other corners now in the auto body industry or the metal industry we call that diamonding and it's because when you take a rectangle and you push a corner you get a diamond yeah well metal also when it gets pushed on a corner or pushed in a flat spot does the same thing just on a much much smaller level and you don't always get that diamond effect but what you do get is you get a stretched area and a shrunk area now to repair it we start at the shrunk area and stretch it back out a little bit then we go to the stretched area and we shrink that a little bit until we get it back into shape. Now on root beer, even though she's a 10 scale model, she's all metal. So the theory is exactly the same. So I wanted to show you how I curve my metal and put edges and all that in it and how I stretch it to do that and how I shrink it to fit. So a lot easier to show you what I'm talking about than to stand here and explain it all for y'all. So let's get on with the showing part. Okay, so yeah. one of the first things, let's take an old scrap piece of metal. Now this is, I make a lot of uh, roses and flowers and lilies and such, yeah? So, and then, and then I, I put them on, on stands and so on, and uh, little tea light candles in them and stuff, and then I sell them. So now this here is all the stretched out area, yeah? That's all stretched. Well, in here, on the opposing side, all along here, this metal has actually shrunk throughout here because of my stretching it here. The metal's got to move, so this area here actually moved back into here. This stretched out area actually moved side to side okay so when I go to uh, 
make parts for, for root beer or any other vehicle. Now let's, uh, hopefully my arms don't get in the way here. I'm just trying to get to uh, one of the new door panels I'm making for root beer. Okay, so I start out obviously with a nice piece of tin, okay, and then I start putting these edges on it. Now, as you can see here, right along here on this edge, hopefully in this edge, you can see that it actually has a bit of a wave going on. Okay? Same as along the top here, very slight wave. Not so much, and the reason not so much on the top is because I took these corners out right, right here and right here. I clipped the corners out, just a little a little 45 degree angle I cut out of the tin, helping it fold over so I don't get any kinks in the corners. But now the wave, that's where the metal has actually uh, stretched and that's why it's all wavy. And the reason of course it's stretched is, is because I put the bend down these sides. Now, on the opposing side, going the opposite way, this will be the outside of the left front, or, well, left front, left door. It's a pickup. It's only going to have one door. Now, when I put that in, of course, all along here on root beer, you can see that the metal is actually overstretched just inside of the bends that I intentionally put in the door. Now, unlike this one, which I hammered and dollied in using using uh, my pick hammer, and I, I have two hammers out here for a reason. I'll get to those in a second. But on the back side, you can see how uniformly it's stretched. Now, if I keep going with that, sooner or later, the metal will actually crack because it'll get so thin. Not because of the heat of the stretching, which hammering metal does cause heat just like anything else friction causes heat yeah but what will happen here is this metal will actually get so thin that the the pick, the pick on the hammer will actually break right through okay so now the point is and what I'm going to show you here two types of hammers one obviously is called a pick hammer the other is a chisel now this is a chisel for and, and you use them for a reason. Now on the door, I use the chisel to form the ridge and form the bends. I use the pick now on this little guy and the reason I would do that is because I start from the outside edge. I actually should be putting it on my dolly and I start from the outside edge. Now I'm going to shrink this metal back down until it's flat just by hitting it. No heat or anything. Now as you see it's starting to go down. I can use my chisel and do the same thing. Now, I'm not complete, but really quickly you can see just how far that's gone down and you can see where it's starting to shrink back into a, more of a flat shape. Now, if we wanted to go at this for about a half an hour, we could bring it right back to this position. The reason I want to show you that, okay, is not so that you can, well, maybe you want to make flowers, I don't know. but. We're, we're talking about RCs on, on this channel, so the reason I showed you that is because every time you get a bend, you're going to have to fix a stretched out area. Now, I use the pick on this because I can actually take the pick 
and move it around in a circle and be more accurate, yeah? You noticed when I used the chisel hammer, I actually had to keep moving the piece. Now on something the size of a horse trailer, that's impractical. You can't pick it up and move it all around the way you want to, so you use the pick and you have to move your hammer instead of the metal, okay? And it hits a much smaller space. Now, the pick hammer obviously has numerous other uses. This is just one, but it's an important one, especially for those of us who are making RCs. Now, this is a nice flat stretch along both of these, and what I want to show you is how to fix root beer's doors. Now, I just use my little dolly. You can use an anvil, you can use the anvil on a vise, anything that will give you the shape that you inevitably need, okay? You can even take and turn the anvil on edge and work it so, yeah? Now, two things. It's maintaining my bend that I need in the door to give the door its rigidity, but I'm also getting rid of that little valley that is created when I bend it. Okay, so we got a little bit further to go on that. And as you notice, my dolly is a little bit too big this way, so you just simply turn it. And that's the beauty of having all these dollies, is you get all the different shapes and sizes that you need to complete your job, yeah? They still charge way too damn much for the things, but, you know, I mean, that's just the way of the world anymore, isn't it? I mean, we got to pay through the nose for any kind of, any kind of uh, tool for mechanics or auto body or anything, right? It's, uh, it's gotten decidedly ridiculous what tools cost these days. It's no wonder our, uh, our mechanic friends have to charge what they do. They've got to pay for their tools. I mean, back in the 70s and 80s, when I was working on, on cars in a shop, you know, working on cars for a living, it was the same way. We had to pay for our tools, but at least tools back then were halfway as reasonable in cost. Now, I can't even say that. I don't know if it was that the tool was halfway as reasonable or we got paid halfway as reasonably versus, you know, a lot of the trades today. A lot, of, a lot of our tradesmen today, they're just not getting paid what they're worth, or hadn't for a long time anyway. I know auto body repairmen for a while were uh, just light years behind mechanics who worked on engines. And I have no idea why that was, but auto body repairmen only, for the longest time, only made half of what a mechanic actually made. We have to spend just as long in school and uh, our tools are every bit as expensive yet we were only making half of what a mechanic made so go figure that out I, uh, I, I hear that's changed now these days but it's, it's about bloody time let me tell you because uh, for a while there it was ridiculous trying to stay in the auto body industry but uh, I digress. So now, the whole point of that is, if you paid attention while I was hammering, I, uh, I put my dolly on one part, and if you noticed, my hammer stroke went from here to 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 here, to here all the way out. I worked from the center and worked out. In other words, I stretched the metal back here, or rather, pardon me, I shrunk the metal back by starting in the center and working my way out. I started in the center and worked my way out. I started in the center and worked my way out, worked my way out. Now, the reason for that is, if you don't do that, all of a sudden, you're gonna get an ocean wave effect in your tin it's just not going to go the way you want it to go, yeah?
I don't choke up on my hammers because I want the weight of the hammer to do the work. But it's not because I'm trying to aim. It's not that I hit straight down on the metal. I actually glance my hammer on the tin. Maybe you, maybe you don't see that on camera, but I'm actually coming down on it and I am glancing. I'm not hammering straight down. If I hammer straight down, I will stretch that area out and this whole panel will get ripples and go wonky all out here so that when I go to cut the window shape out of this, not only will the metal be hard to cut because it's gotten brittle, it's gonna, the, the frame that's left will go all wonky and weird and wavy and it may even break. And it's because the metal was stretched and shrunk in the wrong way. So there is method to the madness. Okay, now I know it's kind of weird that we're looking at a trailer here, horse trailer to be exact, and uh, it's just that there are a few things I wanted to show you. Uh, the trailer is income, and I gotta pay the bills. So, showing you some rust here, a little hard because the sun is really glaring off my, uh, off my back here, and trying to avoid blinding you all with it. But uh, I want to go inside this trailer right quick here and show y'all up here. Now, the reason I want to show y'all in here, I'm not exactly getting the best light here. Okay, the reason why I want to show you in here is this nose of the trailer. This trailer was actually jackknifed while in reverse and it really punched in all of this nose all along here about two feet pushed it pushed it towards the back of the trailer. So this is why I wanted to show you on root beer uh, how I how I stretch and how I shrink metal without heat because on a vehicle this size now it didn't need heat. Some do, some don't. This one, I didn't need the heat to get the shape back. Now you can shrink metal with a torch. I will show you that in another uh, episode. Maybe not of root beer, but I'll, I'll show you that sometime, how to do that with a uh, oxyacetylene torch. But So this was the inspiration for uh, root beer's bending and or uh, shrinking and stretching metal. So these are just some materials uh, that are going in the trailer because I've got to put a center gate in this trailer and we are going to also be raising this roof here. This whole section is going to raise a foot. So uh, yeah, it's going to be quite an elaborate job. Then uh, the rest of the trailer is going to get a complete rust restoration and made brand new. It's about a 1970-71 trailer. And like I say, these little rust spots down here, uh, this cancer is kind of all over the trailer. And the reason I wanted to do also show you this was while working on that section right there, that gate was under such pressure when I went to repair it that when it snapped back, it uh, crushed a couple of fingers on my left hand and I also found out that I cracked a bone on my ulna, uh, or cracked my ulna bone on my left wrist. So unfortunately, I have been out of commission for about three and a half weeks with some broken bones and it's kind of hard to work on a 110 scale model or any size scale model with only one hand. I can't do any metal work or anything like that. It's rather difficult. And uh, I just wanted to check on Maddie. You stay in your yard. That's a good girl. You stay in your yard, sweetheart. Yeah, you stay here. So uh, anyway, let's head back in the shop and have a look at root beer, yeah? Hey guys and girls, we're working on root beer today and so I wanted to show you the doors that I've got done here. Now I've got to obviously 
cut out the windows yet, yeah, in the doors. But point being is, is uh, I know I get a lot of questions about why I do things like put in ridge lines and how I keep things so that they are nice and strong out of thi such thin steel, yeah? You've got complex curves in them and so on and uh, I guess I've just done it for so long I just don't even think about it anymore as being something that maybe somebody would be interested in in learning. But anyway, the point being is, is I do a lot of shrinking and stretching and all of that on, on everything here to, uh, to make root beer the way she is and to make her strong. Now, yeah, I've used a little little tiny bit of putty here to fill in some of the rough spots where uh, I've done some welding and you get a few divots that, you know, I can't really hammer out because if I hammer them out and I go to uh, even sand the metal or or make it smooth, I'm going to rub a hole through, yeah? But, for instance, the fenders here there's there's a ton of shrinking and stretching to get all of this nice curve done out of a flat sheet of metal even without the putty now i mean the putty is is literally thousands of mill of a millimeter thick and uh so anyway that's why i figured i would get into a little bit of bending and stretching on root beer here and uh now I did show you a little piece with um, the the flower if you if you remember the flower yeah um, maybe I still got a hunt yeah I still got a chunk of it left here now when I was showing you and and my hammer strikes were going across the side that just in case you're looking for it the name of that is actually planishing and uh, on root beer now on the fender here there's a lot of that on on the fenders and uh, it's called planishing now armorers or guys who make suits of armor and stuff like that actually use planishing a lot I mean about I would say probably 90 to 95 percent of every piece they touch is planished every square inch of it just because it's got to have such a long smooth curve to follow the human body and follow the shapes they need is because you couldn't physically make it all one sheet and make it work I mean yeah you could have a suit of armor but the dude inside it wouldn't be going anywhere because he's basically just a mannequin you, you need all of those small pieces to come together to form joints well an RC isn't really all that much different if you think about it now yeah it's it's all metal and uh, all of these pieces are just little individual pieces that we think of as oh they're just doors and whatever but same thing as a full-scale vehicle they've all got to go over the terrain we want them to go over and everything's got to give a little and move a little without doing any damage yeah and this is where all of these stiffening ridges and all of these little things I do here become so very important to know but the metal poses its own sets of problems whereas the Lexan you, you guys don't have to think about that you all just slap them on and run them and uh, the vehicle goes down and the body doesn't move it just bends and twists and and crazy stuff like that there well when I'm making a metal one it has to function just like a real vehicle yeah so this is where all of these little techniques come together and we're gonna get into more of that as we continue on here with root beer so I've got the doors going and uh, so next I'm I'm gonna put the hinges on them and get them mounted the cab is already mounted the box needs to be mounted okay so that's coming next 
and I will get into showing you all how I do that. And then, further down the line, uh, not this video, but further down the line, I will get into showing you all, um, we're going to start installing the motor and the tranny and all of that. And uh, I've got a couple of links I've got to make for her yet and uh, some jazz like that. But root beer is coming very, very close to uh, a, I will say, a pre-final assembly so that I can get everything put together and know it's going to go together. Then it's all got to come apart. Then it's got to get primed and then it's got to get painted. So a little ways to go yet, but not too, too terribly far. 